God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries give us, gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel, that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year old male, you may take it from the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which you eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, and they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of, e of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116 will be read responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will, I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your enemy. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the court of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for this is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you as an example 
that you shall also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had, has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, Paul tells the Corinthians in this reading today. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We typically think of remembering as uh, the mental equivalent of looking at an old photograph, uh, the dusting off of facts and experiences from, from the past, bringing some encapsulated historical bits out of their filing cabinet or museum case, out of the forgotten archives, into the present, for a few brief moments of reflection. But this is not the kind of remembering that Paul is talking about. This, this is not what Paul means. This is not biblical remembering, not biblical memory. You all know that well-worn soap opera plot device that uh, uses amnesia, where someone gets hit on the head and, and they can't remember who they are. These people suffering from amnesia, they're, they're not themselves. They're lost. They're confused. They're lonely. They're fearful. But then, once their amnesia is cured, they are once again able to be who they really are. They are themselves again. So when Paul says, do this in remembrance of me, the word that he's using is actually anamnesia in Greek, literally unamnesia. What we're doing when we celebrate the Eucharist, Paul says, is not simply recalling what Jesus happened to say that Monday, Thursday night in the upper room so long ago. It's, it's life-changing. It's identity-restoring living action. We are remembering ourselves. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, and neither can we put ourselves back together again. But Jesus can, and Jesus does. Paul says that when we welcome the presence of the living Jesus into our lives, our amnesia is cured. We are no longer lost, no longer confused, no longer lonely, no longer fearful. We can know and become who we truly are, the redeemed, the beloved, the children of God. These are difficult readings for a strange and hard night. A night when we read of the very first Eucharist at a time when we ourselves cannot participate, when we have gone so many weeks without being able to share the holy bread of Christ's body and the holy wine of Christ's blood. On this strange and hard night, we will not be saying these words of institution that we heard from St. Paul. We won't be using that part of our liturgical prayers that is actually officially called the anamnesis, the unamnesia part, our affirmation of remembering and assimilating Jesus' real presence into our lives. Monday, Thursday in isolation seems to be almost a cruel mockery of itself. How can we make sense of it? 
Reverend Andrea Mosky Metcalf, an ELCA pastor, has written this poem. It's called A Poem for Monday, Thursday in Isolation. And it's helped me find comfort on this strange and hard night. A night that was surely strange and hard for Jesus as well, as he broke bread and blessed his dearest friends, whom he knew would just a few hours later betray and abandon him. A strange and hard night. On the night in which he was betrayed, that is to say, the night before he was killed, the night when his friends gave him up, gave him over to their greed and their fear, which they regretted almost immediately, but even almost immediately turned out to be already too late. On that night, Jesus sat around the dinner table with his friends. Things were dicey, even if no one said it aloud. Some of them couldn't sleep, and some of them slept all the time and all of their thinking was fuzzy. The men in charge, in other more important places, couldn't get their story straight. The body count kept rising. No one knew what would happen in the end, but it was clear that things would get much worse before they even began to get better. On that night, the meal was plain and simple and confusing even. Most of the usual stuff was all out at the grocery store, and anyway, the Instacart delivery wouldn't arrive for another three days. On that night, Jesus took those pre-packaged sandwich crackers, the, the bright orange kind with peanut butter in the middle, and he gave thanks, and he shared them around the table, and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you to remind you that nourishment takes on so many forms, to remind you for a while, maybe even forever, that nourishment will look differently now. But this body is enough, and you are enough, and we are enough. Eat these together and remember me. In the same way, after that strange supper, he took cranberry juice cocktail. The wine had run out days before, and Anyway, this was the same color with added vitamin C. He poured it into champagne flutes and water bottles and shot glasses and sippy cups, and he gave thanks. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people. Listen up for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. This cup is poured out to remind you to look for community in new and unexpected ways, to remind you to be community for others in new and unexpected ways, because this cup is enough, and you are enough, and we are enough. Drink this together and remember me. And they did. That strange and confusing meal was all they had, but that night it was enough. And they were scared, whether they said it out loud or not, but they were together in one way or another. And that was enough. And together, that night, we were enough. Tonight we heard from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. In another of his letters to the Romans, St. Paul assures us that neither death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing is able to separate us from God's love. The Book of Common Prayer on page 457 says that if one is unable to actually consume the consecrated Eucharistic bread and wine due to extreme sickness or disability, the desire is enough for God to grant all the benefits of communion. When being present at a celebration of the Eucharist is absolutely impossible, prayer and meditation can provide the means by which we can open ourselves to Jesus' presence and to God's grace and blessing. 
my prayer for you all tonight is that you will pray for Jesus to come into your heart. Pray to unite yourself with him and offer praise and thanksgiving for all of life's blessings and for Jesus' precious passion, death, and resurrection. My prayer is that as you do this, you will be united with Jesus and know his real, active, and living presence in your heart and in your life that you will share Jesus' passion for justice and mercy, that you will see others with Jesus' eyes of love and compassion, that you will serve with Jesus' selfless and sacrificial strength. My prayer is that through Jesus' presence, we all will, each of us, be remembered, be put back together as our true selves, as we were intended to be by God, the members of Jesus' body, here and now and scattered, as we wait to be remembered all together in praise and worship at the end of this pandemic's journey. For nothing, nothing, nothing is able to separate us from the life-changing presence and the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the repose of the soul of Carol, for safe travel for John, for comfort for Mary Ann. For all hospital workers and caregivers. For the families of those who cannot be with their loved ones during this time. O oh Lord our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you.
to absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of His Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.